Welcome everyone to day three of Be a Builder. If you're joining us new, we are building an app from start to finish, step by step. Join us every morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time for a new video, then share your progress online for a chance to win prizes. In fact, watch to the end of this video to learn what you need to share on Twitter using the hashtag Be a Builder to be entered to win an awesome prize pack. Two lucky people will be getting a really cool custom Be a Builder t-shirt, trailhead water bubble, some really cute Astro coasters, and surprise, some Bose headphones. So be sure to watch the end and share your progress. So day two, we talked about tips for gathering requirements. And we gave you a requirements template and we filled out our requirements for our Astronomica app. For day three, we're really gonna think about the structure of our app and how to build a data model. I am excited to hear from Principal Admin Evangelist Leanne Rymel about how to build a really great data model that really reflects what we want our app to do while also making it sustainable and scalable. Let's go hear from her. Thanks, Rebecca. So we spent the last two days learning about how we can understand the needs of our organization and how we ask the right questions to understand what is the data that we want to track? What's the information we need for this app? Now we're ready to start architecting the data model for our app, which will then help us build our app in later days. So let's get started. So when we're ready to start our data model, we want to think about what is the data we said we want to track. Well, we know we want to start with project. Project is our primary object of this app, but there's information within the project we want to track. Information like the account related to the project, the start and end date, what the status of the project is, and also some additional information like description and who owns this project. So I've built out all of those core elements, which are going to be fields that I want on the project. Now I look at how these fields can relate to other data in my app. This is when it's really important to have an understanding of the existing standard objects in your Salesforce environment, because then we can find what are those standard objects that will help support our custom app. So we're going to relate this project to account because we already have an accounts object. Now we also want to make sure that we're relating it in the right way. So we want accounts to be able to have many projects. So that's going to be a one to many relationship where one account can have multiple projects. We also want our projects to have tasks and events. We know that we want to track milestones, important to do items and meetings for this project. So we're going to connect those to other standard objects in Salesforce like tasks and event. Now again, we want to make sure that we're thinking about having that one-to-many relationship because a project can have many to-do items and could have many meetings. Now finally, we want to think about how this project relates to owners. Are all of our owners going to be Salesforce users? And what should that relationship look like? Well, in this case, we know that the owner is going to be a Salesforce user and we want to use that standard object and also have a one-to-many relationship because project managers might be owning many projects. So with that, we've drawn our data model where we're tracking not only the different types of information we want to track, which is projects, accounts, owners, tasks, and events, but also what the relationship should look like. So everywhere you see the little fork for the arrows, that's where we have a one-to-many relationship, which means that an account can have many projects, owners can own multiple projects, and projects can have multiple tasks and multiple events. So with that, we've drawn our data model, and now we're ready to start building. Back to you, Rebecca. Wow, that was awesome. Data models can be super complicated and hard to understand, but Leanne made it so easy to follow. To summarize, I learned that we should start by writing down what data we want to capture and report on, then consider all the existing objects in our org, and lastly, define how our new object relates to those existing objects. Okay, now if this all seems a little foreign to you, don't worry. I recommend just diving right in because getting hands-on will help you learn. And guess what? That is what we're gonna do. 
Start by drawing out your data model. You can use a whiteboard or a piece of paper or a PowerPoint, just something to visualize the fields and the relationships. And then before you start building it out in your org, I definitely recommend reviewing the data modeling module on Trailhead so that you can get familiar with new terms and types of fields and know what they mean. Um, pay particular attention to the unit that covers object relationships so that you know, for example, what the difference is between a lookup field and a master detail field. That will be super helpful when you start building it out and customizing your org. Speaking of orgs, from now on, we'll be building and demoing our app in a free developer edition org. And we recommend you do the same. You can get one at bit.ly slash developer org. With that out of the way, I mentioned earlier that today is a special day because it's the first opportunity to win a prize pack. So listen carefully, share your data model drawing with us on Twitter using hashtag be a builder and you will automatically get entered to win. Restrictions do apply, so see official rules on the be a builder page. So now that we've developed the data model for our app, be sure to join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific to learn how to design an awesome user experience for your app. See you then.